In this video, I'll show you how to remove dark circles under eyes in Affinity Photo. Let's get started. If you'd like to follow along with me, I've left a download link to this photo in the video description. So there's two elements that contribute to the dark circles look. One is the actual dark color, and the other is the texture. You see the way this is sort of indented right here? So because there are those two elements that we need to fix, I think this is the perfect time to pull out a fun filter called Frequency Separation. To prepare for applying that, I just want to duplicate this layer. So go ahead and press Ctrl J on a PC or Command J on a Mac. We'll apply the filter to this duplicate copy. So go ahead and go up to the top of your screen to Filters, and then go down to Frequency Separation. This filter is special because it divides our image into two separate layers, one for texture only, and the other for colors only. You'll be able to see this better if I increase the radius. So on this side, you can see all of that skin texture, and on the other, we have the nice fuzzy colors. This is nice because it means we can smooth out the colors on their own layer without making the skin texture look fuzzy and strange. And it's also nice in the reverse, we can adjust the texture without worrying about changing the colors. If that sounds a little bit confusing, don't worry, you're about to see it in action. <laughs> First, I'm going to lower the radius. I think around 7 pixels is good for this one, because you can see the skin texture nicely, and you can see a little bit of fuzziness here. If I raise this too high, you'll start to see the colors on this layer, and that's just not going to work very well. So bring it to around 7 this time, and then press Apply. And over in the layers, you can see those two layers. Let's start by adjusting the colors, because I think that will show a big improvement from the start. I'll select the low frequency layer, and I'll apply a pixel layer on top of that. We can use this layer to sample and paint colors on, and having this high frequency texture layer on top just means we won't be affecting that layer. So I'm going to grab the paintbrush tool, then I'm going to make sure I have 0% hardness and a nice low flow. I'm going to use the bracket keys on my keyboard to make my brush a little bit smaller. And then we're going to sample and paint colors as we go. To do this quickly, we can hold Alt on a PC or Option on a Mac, and then click on an area to sample the color. This will automatically be applied to your paintbrush, which is really nice. So I'm going to hold Alt or Option, and I'll click, and I'm just going to paint this light sampled color over this area. If I continue to paint this all the way up here, it's going to start to look strange because we have this darker color right next to it. So the goal right now is just to smooth out all of the colors by bringing them toward the center. So I'm going to sample this darker color, and I'll paint that over this area. And then to bridge the gap between these two, I'm going to hover my brush right in the middle, I'll hold Alt or Option and I'll sample, and now we should have a color that's somewhere in between those two colors. And I'll just dab it over the area, like putting on makeup. <laughs> Alright, and now that that's smoothed out, I'm just going to come down here and sample this more neutral middle color. I'll make my brush a little bit bigger. And then I'm going to paint this over the whole area to smooth the whole thing out. You can already see this is a huge improvement. Here's the before and after. Okay, so now that the dark colors are gone, Let's reduce some of this strange texture right here. To do that, I'm going to select the high frequency layer, and then I'm going to use the clone brush tool. 
Make sure this tool is set to current layer only. We only want to affect the texture here. Then make sure you have 0% hardness and around 50% for your flow. I'll make my brush a little bit larger. And then we can use the clone brush similar to how we were just using the paintbrush. So keep your hand hovered over the Alt or Option key. Then go ahead and click on an area that you want to sample. You can see this little black marker appear, which shows that's the area you're sampling. And then as you paint, you can see it moves alongside your brush. So similar to painting, I'm going to sample from both sides as I go to bring it toward the middle. Just trying to reduce that indentation look. Another fun thing you can do with frequency separation is reducing wrinkles. I'll hold Alt or Option to sample this smooth area. And then using a small brush, I can paint on this area to reduce this wrinkle. Make sure you're sampling an area that's right next to the wrinkle so that the skin texture looks right. Some wrinkles are so deep that you might also need to change the colors a little bit to make them look right. So I think I'll have to do that in this case. I'll go back to our color layer, the pixel layer. Then I'll select the brush tool. I'll sample a nice color right above the wrinkle. And then I'll just paint it over the area. All right, and just like that, you can see that we've reduced those dark circles. Here's the before and the after. If you want this to look a little bit more natural, I suggest you take your pixel layer that you painted on for colors, and you can just lower the opacity of that to bring back some of the original color. Before and after. Easy as that. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next Affinity Revolution tutorial.